So, I'm at a hotel lobby, and, hello Kimberly, and this water, it, they put apples, they put apples in the, real apples in the water, so it tastes like apples. There you go, Theo. But, guess what, you don't need apples in the water to watch this video about ancient mysteries, okay? It's awesome, okay. <laughs>
This might explain how Asians got into America over a, a land bridge in Siberia, which today would be fairly inhospitable, but might at one time have been warm and friendly. The west coast of USA would have been more hospitable than the east, which was closer to the former pole, which was closer to Greenland. They mixed with other humans already living in the Americas. There was no glaciation in Siberia or Eurasia today, uh, presumably because a kind of circumpolar current is required, such as around the landmass of Antarctica or around Greenland. Meanwhile, the Arctic Ocean is being fed by warm waters of the Atlantic conveyor, bringing water from the Caribbean, warming the UK, warming Scandinavia, and even continuing into the Arctic Ocean to warm Russia, if you can call it that. Here is the thing. This conveyor's water didn't reach polar latitudes until the Ice Age, uh, during the Ice Age, as there were glaciers in the way. Yet, Siberia had its mammoths. We had actual glaciers halfway down the UK, halfway down Europe, halfway down America, yet nothing in Siberia. It was a grassland steppe, an Arctic paradise, whereas, if you can call it Arctic, because it could have been somewhere else. Whereas today, lands as far north as the mammoths used to roam are literally hell on earth. The land bridge, the Bering Strait, was ice-free. And yet, at more southerly latitudes, there was an ice sheet right across Canada and halfway down the United States. I'm starting to think there were no ice ages at all, simply ice shifting in different directions due to pole shifts and scratching up the landscape, confusing future geologists. After all, if we look back into ancient history, no ancient culture claims ice as a catastrophe at all. This whole ice thing is really overblown. Ancient peoples only claim floods as a catastrophe, even one that enveloped the world. That was the real catastrophe, it wasn't ice. If we use the glacial distribution, which is still across Greenland, as a clue, and look at where the glaciers once were, it's rather obvious that the pole must have been around the southern pole of Greenland. There is literally nowhere else it can be. This must have been the rotational axis of the Earth. If we look at the chart of temperature changes, it looks almost like a heartbeat. A heartbeat is made of contractions and expansions, but it is a closed system with no loss of energy or apparent gain of energy, just a repeating pattern. So why ascribe any rare impact hypothesis to the event at all? Perhaps we will better understand what's actually causing ice ages once we take plasma cosmology and electric universe into greater consideration. As Tesla pointed out, the Earth acts as a capacitor. It's a floating muck heap of cometary debris, which is the crust and oceans, floating on top of basically a small star. Anyone who doesn't think the interior of the Earth can be called a star can explain exactly what kind of star Proxima Centauri, our nearest star after the Sun, is at only magnitude 13, emitting a, a weird, dim, red-brown light and totally invisible to the naked eye. Maybe Electric Universe will reveal what really drives the Ice Ages. We can't know everything 100%, but it seems Charles Hapgood was absolutely right. You're not going to have warm temperatures, lots of green grass and other plants, trees, and plenty of light at the North Pole. No one really wants to discuss this as it's, it's career-ending to, to ask why. There is just no way that on a much warmer Earth, mammoths which were once in subtropical conditions could be still frozen in the ice to this day unless you allow for a pole shift. I suppose the other explanation would be that continents are moving much faster than was once realised and a gap allowing warm water into this region has since closed up. Still, with so much darkness in the upper latitudes, it seems that mammoths would not have been up there anyway, as nothing would have grown. So, why were they up there? Well, I suppose the answer is pole shift. Let us look at the temperature chart. When scientists first discovered the Greenland as well as Antarctica ice core readings, and the implications of, of this new technique of looking at past temperatures, 
They noted at once that while the last 10,000 years have been relatively stable, the time before that was a literal nightmare of steep temperature changes until a previous uh, warm, brief warm time, uh, except for a previous brief warm time over 100,000 years ago, as well as another time 40,000 years ago, when there was stability and civilizations could have achieved world lo worldwide language as today. Fred Hoyle was one of the best alternate thinkers of the 20th century. And, you know, he wrote a really fascinating book about ice in 1981, in which he rubbished all theories as current in the 70s, but still current for allegedly explaining the ice ages. He mentioned the Milankovitch cycle idea of three different cycles coinciding to form ice ages. These are precession, which is Earth's gyroscopic wobble every 20,000 years, a 3% variation in the eccentricity of orbit over hundreds of thousands of years, and finally tilt, varying from 21.5 to 24.5 degrees over 41,000 years. Hoyle said uh, to bring these all together to explain the ice ages is a bunch of rubbish since none of the factors really affect the amount of energy hitting Earth. You can't stop an egg from boiling by altering its angle in the saucepan, so that can't be the reason for the ice ages. Actually, I'm not sure that Fred Hoyle was in at all in all possession of the facts, because not only was there ice deflecting solar rays, which he dismissed as insignificant, but there were clouds as well. For example, noctilucent clouds are rare clouds of the stratosphere, seen at polar latitudes well after sunset, and they are so high up that they only light up red well after sunset. They are actually a kind of glaciation of the upper atmosphere, it seems, as they hover over and spread out from the poles and then shrink away as soon as temperatures heat up the next day. But it seems they didn't... Uh, they, they would have enveloped the Earth during the Ice Age, and we, we would have resembled a white ball deflecting a huge amount of heat, and the skies would have been perpetually overcast. It doesn't seem to be any of precession, tilt, or eccentricity which explains why Russia was warm. Quite simply, the pole itself must have been in a different place, possibly in conjunc conjunction with a different tilt, and we're going to try and prove that. Consider the Atlantis legend. Plato said that the start of the God's punishment of the wickedness of mankind was earthquakes which occurred all in a single day and night, everywhere, because they drowned both Atlantis as well as the Athenian army. With a final earthquake shudder, the oceans rose, and the oceans then settled over a smaller planet, swamping everything that was coastal, such that only those on the mountains survived. This seems inconsistent with the evidence of, a gradu of gradual sea level rises, and it shows us that uh, catastrophes uh, are both catastrophic as well as natural, uh, and a timed kick out of the ice ages was possibly responsible for the sea level rises. The chart shows this was going to happen. It's not an accident from outer space. In fact, we were due for another ice age. We are due for another ice age right now as part of the natural cycle. No one knows why the ice age ended, but it seems rather odd that so many people have ascribed a catastrophic explanation to the Earth coming out of the ice age. The Younger Dryas period, for instance, is unusual, a suddenly return to cold temperatures for 1,000 years. Was it a bombardment from space? A strange blip which some have ascribed uh, to a, a super catastrophe. In fact, isn't it really too much of a coincidence that a catastrophe should have hit at the same time as the Ice Age was due, like clockwork, according to the chart, to end anyway? Perhaps Earth passes through a debris field every 100,000 years, but that doesn't make a lot of sense either, as we are not really aware of one. Hoyle's theory was ultimately that a meteorite smacking into Earth would kick up diamond dust, and if this lingered in the atmosphere for a certain number of years, an ice age would be triggered, as everything reaching Earth would be reflected back. But how could this have happened? People who say there is no evidence for pole shift are looking at shifts in the magnetic pole, which is actually not the same thing as the rotational pole. In fact, the rotational pole seems to keep its position while the magnetic pole wanders all over the place rather rapidly. It's actually moving at 60 kilometers a year, up from 20 kilometers a year 100 years ago, 
and is at present over northern Canada. We can look at archaeological evidence. This is Norman Lockyer. He said that the oldest Egyptian temples are stellar cults because they are not equinoctial. That is, they don't, they, their temples didn't point to north, east, south, west. The equinoctial cult where the pyramid builders of, uh, were the pyramid builders of northern Egypt. Clearly, the Great Pyramid points to the present poles. But he mentioned a pole star cult. Of course, the pole star is not true north, but it almost is. So could the ancients have actually been pointing to the former location of the pole rather than the actual stars? And we can look at ancient monuments to prove it. This is Gebekli Tepe, a monument which is 11,000 years old. It's made up of various stone rings. Bizarrely, they are round and they have two central pillars which look from the air like a pair of bar magnets. Their direction is always north-northwest to something approaching northwest. In other words, they point not to the pole, but to Greenland or Norway, possibly where the North Pole used to be. Avebury is the same. Just look at it. Pointing to northwest, it looks like it wants to point north, east, south, and west, yet it doesn't. And somehow they have slipped up badly. But the fact is, they couldn't have because they put so much work into this. Uh, equinoctial sunrise and, and sunsets show exactly where east and west are, so they couldn't have slipped up. And yet they've got those wrong as well. Why would they make it so close to north-south east-west, and, and not point in those directions? Are they pointing to magnetic north and south instead? But that doesn't make any sense because they've stuffed up east and west, which is very easy to check. Here is another stone circle from Caithness during, doing the same thing. So surely everyone couldn't have been making the same mistake. The fact is we just don't know what these monuments are pointing to. And I got this idea from a website I'll link to below, a guy who discusses other ancient monuments rather than the above, such as the Avenue of the Dead at Teotihuacan, which also points to where the pole used to be. All this information proves the extreme antiquity of these monuments. And when you think about it, why should man have suddenly popped into existence only 6,000 years ago, as the archaeologists almost claim, or seem to claim, that makes no sense at all. We have been making monuments since forever, and these monuments that we think are, are fairly recent are actually incredibly old, but they've been rebuilt. I put it to you that the flood, and this is going to be in part two, was caused by the earth shrinking. By settling several percentages in size, the smaller earth preceded by an earthquake Waters gushed over a smaller surface area, raising sea levels. The calendar switched from 360 to 365 days as the same spin speed of Earth was retained over a smaller planet. Not only does this explain the flood, but a whole host of other phenomena without the need for any comet intervention. This was remembered in the Bible as the flood, and there was actually... Uh, there, there is actually no need at all to invoke the cometary impact hypothesis. That may have occurred at Carolina Bays, but that was far earlier, 140,000 to 60,000 years ago. I think the latter, making them coincident with the Toba eruption, a supervolcano in Indonesia, which ended the super civilization, if there was one. And I think that there was, based on all the evidence and all the videos I've been making, and way more. The beauty of this theory is that it is simple and doesn't require any outside interference, any chance encounters with comets, it's as regular as clockwork, and it has sudden catastrophic components as well as more gradual ones, explaining ancient legends. Of course, ancient legends never talk about ice spreading or ice ages, they only talk about earthquakes and floods. Stay tuned for part two, in which this new theory is fully explained, and we try to explain everything in one go. Thanks for watching, and take care.